One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report, the Hague Report, la la la. Oh, it's the Hague Report, the Hague Report, la la la. Good morning, guys. Oh. So, hey guys, I'm James Hake. This is the Hake Report. It is Tuesday, September 10th, 2019, and it is 9 a.m. live in the fourth hour of Jesse Lee Peterson's stream. Thank you, Jesse. JLPtalk.com for the audio feed, live feed, that is. If you want to hear the podcast, go to thehakereport.com slash podcast after the show I uploaded, like midday, my time. And shout out to YouTube D Live. We got you guys back up. D Live temporarily went down, but we turned it off and on again. Thank you to all you guys for the good tips on how to fix that. And we are back on Mixer, mixer.com slash JLP Talk. Thank you, Mixer, I guess. Thank you guys on Mixer. And of course, Periscope. I'm looking at you guys' comments, trying to keep them an eye on them. The live chat on YouTube goes way too fast for me. But I catch some of what you guys say. Thank you. And I am going to be having a rare Hake Report event coming up soon. I'm going to have a guest. Nice, right? I haven't had a guest in quite some time. Um, I think it'll be via Skype. So, cool. I got a little uh, lightweight producer working for me. Nice, huh? A little uh, nice surprise is coming up, hopefully. And uh, yeah, cool. Looking forward to talking with people. And thank you guys for calling in. I will get to your calls. 888-775-3773. But I want to talk about um, this Trump in Fayetteville, North Carolina event that took place last night. Trump was promo- promoting Republican Dan Bishop... And another guy named, um, I forget what his name was. I can probably pull it up because I might have taken a screenshot of the live chat during the thing. I was watching, I watched pretty much the whole event on this channel called Golden State Times. And, uh, yeah, there is this, there is this bot called Nightbot, which is a moderator that can work as a moderator service for channels that live stream and this moderator bot somehow gave me a warning and I'm in the I was in the live chat shout out to he black he was in which is a YouTube uh, account who watches Jesse's show he black he was in the chat too and we were having fun making fun of the beta liberals who hate Trump and I called one guy a female minded beta liberal and I don't know if it was that chat comment from me or what, but Nightbot gave me a warning saying, we like, we like to keep things clean and enjoyable for everyone. And then parentheses, warning. And so I blocked Nightbot. I went over, checked it out, what it, saw what it's about. An automated YouTube bot account, right? If I block them, guys, does that mean that they will not see my comments? <laughs> that, was, that was my scheme. I don't know. But, uh, so if you guys know, you can let me know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I blocked the moderator. The bot. But anyways, Trump spoke in Fayetteville. And he said that our evangelicals are here. And you'll notice he said our evangelicals. And that's nice, right? Because the evangelicals, meaning the Christians who tend to be closer to the real Christianity, um, tend to be Republican, tend to be pro-Trump. And that's a good sign that maybe they're on the right track. And so he called them our evangelicals. And I remember hearing one of my, like my brother-in-law or some guy that was kind of liberal, or at least anti-Trump, intellectual person, said, oh, this is my, this is my African-American. And this this intellectual that I was talking to, he was acting like that's Trump acting like he owns this black man. And it's ridiculous. 
It's just, just, Trump is just an old timer saying old timey things, meaning he just speaks his mind, which is cool. And he said, he was making this point about our evangelicals, they're with us, they're here. And he said that the Democrats pretend to try to act like they're re- re- um, religious too, right? Because Trump has done a lot for the freedom of religion. Or he's sought to anyways. A lot of the judges try to knock that down, so do the legislature, and so does the media. The media pretends they don't have power. I'm going to get to them. They do have power. <laughs> The power of influence. They're subverters. Some of you guys are right that they're very subversive. But anyways, he said that the Democrats say little things, make put out little statements about religion sometimes, but nobody's fooled by them. It was so funny. If I get the chance, I'll pull up a clip, um, maybe another day, and share it with you guys. But if I recommend checking out the the speech. It was like an hour and a half. It went by like that though, real fast. And I noticed he brought up the guy on stage, Dan um, Bishop, Republican guy. Seems like an okay guy. But Dan Bishop, I wonder what Dan Bishop felt standing next to Trump, who's very entertaining, real, genuine, and trying to be entertaining and energetic and real and and fun. (laughs) I just wonder if it's like a challenge to him, if it messes with his mind at all. If he feels funny that he's, or feels fake or anything like that, trying to be uh, on the same stage with Trump, talking in between Trump talking. Because everybody loves to hear Trump talk, especially when he's speaking off the cuff from the heart. Whereas these other guys, they come off as politicians. (laughs) So I don't know. I can kind of relate, I guess. Um, Because, you know, a lot of us are big fans of Jesse, and then when a guest host sits in or something like that, it's like, ah, who's this guy? I remember when, um, when uh, Bill O'Reilly was on Fox News. I'm a Bill O'Reilly fan, right? Good guy, old-timer. A little bit standard, but good guy. He, um, a little bit fair. But when he had, uh, that guy who goes out on the, who used to go out on the street and do the the man-on-the-street interviews, funny young guy, but when he sat in, I'm like, huh? I don't like him sitting in as, as the host. Just doesn't work. So that's that st- sort of feeling. I just wonder how people, how people take it and how he feels doing, trying to do it. Anyways, the crowd over in North Carolina kept chanting, USA, USA, USA. And I'm one of those people who's so brainwashed and traumatized by the liberals that that thing, I immediately think, racist. That's racism to chant USA. <laughs> because it's usually chanted at POCs, people of color. Or, you know, the anchor babies and immigrants and stuff. And it's like an in-your-face, we are real Americans, you guys are not. And it happens to be true most, much, much of the time. Sometimes it's said with a mean spirit. You know, the media likes to act like Trump supporters are so mean-spirited. They're not. Sometimes some can get a little mean-spirited. But everybody's mean-spirited, especially the media. So that's pots and kettles, right? The pot media trying to call the um, sometimes edgy uh, Trump supporters black. (laughs) Black sold. And uh, anyways, Trump went after the fake news, which was very nice. And of course he went after the Democrats. And he talked about how McCready, Dan McCready, the Democrat from, it's the two Dans, right? Who is running against uh, Dan Bishop from the 9th District of North Carolina. Called him Open Borders. And of course the media leaned on the, um, these fake fact checkers. Just like they lean on fake hate watchers like the SPLC, Southern Poverty Law Center, and the ADL, Anti-Defamation League, which are very defamatory, hateful organizations. They hate whites, Christians, um, men. They're very politically correct. Pro-homosexual, meaning against the people that are homosexual, because they promote the worst in them as good, when it's not good. So um, the media tend to lean on those people and pretend like they're hiding behind those people who have the facts. And so these fact-checkers tend to be liberals, intellectuals, and I'll get to them more. 
but they rated Trump's comment about McCready as false when Trump said McCready is for open borders. But how is that not false? If you're a Democrat, you are for open borders. They haven't closed the borders in decades, and neither have the rhinos, to be honest. So most of the Republicans are open borders, too. We all know this. Only President Trump has sought to close the border and a few others, like um, that Iowa congressman Steve King, the one who is censured as a white supremacist when he's not. He's just a, I mean, who cares anyways, even if he were. But they want to act like it's such a terrible thing to be a nationalist because that's what uh, Iowa Rep- congressman Steve King is, the Republican who said Western civilization, how this get lumped in with uh, white nationalism, white supremacy, so-called stuff. And it's scare, scaremongering about Nazis when they should be concerned about commies, which is what they are. That's why they're scaremongering about the Nazis. Speaking of that, and then I will get to some calls, I want to briefly cover this potty-mouthed wife thing. Chrissy, you ever heard of Chrissy Legend? <laughs> I think it's Chrissy Teigen or Tegan or something like that. She was a model. Well, she's the wife of this beta rap- rapper, <laughs> beta singer, <laughs> boring singer, according to Trump, John Legend. He has a couple good songs, but he's a liberal, and he hates um, Trump. He has severe Trump derangement syndrome. He's gotten into public Twitter fights with Trump's uh, son, Don Jr., I think. I think they went to the same school or something. Anyways, yeah, you sh- we showed this TMZ thing. Chrissy Legend to President Trump. What a P-A-B. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't uh, blank out these words. But anyways, you are, she called, she called him that after he called her filthy mouthed. So she proved him right. And so Trump had tweeted, Trump was tweeting about his criminal justice reform. He's been doing stuff to kind of kiss up to the blacks. I don't entirely agree with it, but he said when he's, he tweeted, and this was September 8th, I believe that's yesterday, no, two days ago. When all, this was Sunday, I guess, Sunday evening. When all of the people pushing so hard for criminal justice reform, that was a buzzword, right? Anytime they add the word reform to anything, you know they're going to try to make it worse, right? Hopefully Trump kind of qu- made it, make it less worse. Hopefully. But anyways, he said, when all the people pushing so hard for criminal justice reform were unable to come even close to getting it done, they came to me as a group and asked for my help. I got it done with a group of senators and others who would never have gone for it. Obama couldn't even come close. True. A man named Van Jones 68, who was at one point, I believe, a communist. Now he's like a CNN guy or was a CNN guy. Very radical guy. But people like Newt Gingrich kiss up to him. Cheap. But anyways, he's, uh, Trump said, Many others were profusely grateful at that time. I signed it into law. No one else did, and Republicans deserve much credit. But now that it is passed, people that had virtually nothing to do with it are taking the praise. Guys like boring musician John Legend and his filthy-mouthed wife are talking now about how great it is, but I didn't see them around when we needed to get it past anchor, quote-unquote, anchor, Lester Holt of NBC, doesn't even bring up the subject of President Trump or the Republicans when talking about the the importance or passage of criminal justice reform. They only talk about the minor players or people that had nothing to do with it, and the people so desperately sought my help when everyone else had failed All they talk about now is impeaching President Trump. Some gratefulness, huh? That's what you get for working with liberals, President Trump. But I still support President Trump generally. And so Trump talked about, he he named everybody except for the filthy-mouthed wife of John Legend, Chrissy Legend. So Chrissy Legend, oh, I forgot to bleep this. Okay, I mean, it's not a clip, but it has, should I... Okay, hide your kids. Should I just show it? Okay, I'm just going to show this, but I'm not going to say it. But it has like three different bad words all in a row from this woman, liberal woman, John Legend's wife, 
filthy mouthed wife. Here's the example. She just proves Trump's right. Let's go ahead and show it. She says, LOL, what a P word, A word, B word. Tagged everyone but me. An honor, Mr. President. So we can take that back down. Sorry, guys. I forgot to censor it. And so TMZ points out, worth noting, Trump blocked Chrissy on Twitter back in 2017. The federal appeals court has since ruled that Trump can't blo- cannot block people from his official Twitter account, but it's unclear if he has unblocked Chrissy. But he should just unblock them from POTUS, but still tweet from real Donald Trump, because that's his private Twitter account. Anyways, uh, John Legend got in on the mudslinging as well, begging Melania to basically come get her man and give him the attention and praise he's so desperately craving. Well, uh, that's another pots and kettles thing. I don't think... I don't know, but I don't think that Trump is so needy as John Legend is. Remember he sang that song, All of you loves all of me. That's him kissing up to his wife, Chrissy. Chrissy Legend. And so uh, John Legend tweeted, and then I will get to calls. I'm trying to rush through this. But anyway, Chrissy Legend is nasty. So her husband, also nasty, taking a cue from her said, imagine being a president of a whole country and spending your Sunday night hate-watching MSNBC hoping somebody, anybody, will praise you. Melania, please praise this man. He needs you. Uh, No, I think you're projecting, John. And he said, your country needs you, Melania. What a dummy. And so anyways, that's John Legend. Beta and his beta wife. Filthy-mouthed wife. Just showing you... It's just kind of interesting how when you call people what they are, they show you what they are. <laughs> She's going to be known as a filthy-mouthed wife. Trump uh, brands people by observing what they are and telling you what they are, and then they prove him right. <laughs> Anyways, let me get to some callers. Chris, out of Arizona, nice to hear from you again. Hi, James. How hey, are you? Doing fine. I'm great. Nice. Right on. Thank you for signing the book that, um, oh, oh, yeah, responsibility. Thank you so much. And, um, you're welcome. Uh, Charnel wrote something really nice in there for me. Cool. I'm really thankful. Right on. Yeah, it's a nice bond crew that we have going. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, the past three, uh, shows, Jesse's shows have really had me roaring in laughter. Love Hillary this morning. And oh, Nick, yeah. They- Oh, yeah, Nick yeah. DiCarlo. That's yeah, that's right. Good guess, it, was, huh? it was really awesome. And, uh, I mean, not only that, but the lady that talked with uh, Jesse yesterday, what was her? Robin. Wow. How insightful and interesting and, you know, just, you know, gut-wrenching. Wrenching? And, uh, you know, um. Jesse's just really doing a great job. Yeah. All of you guys are. Yeah, I appreciate that. He is um, doing what's right. And he's, he's living what he preaches, which is nice to see. So It's that's cool. nice to see and it's apparent. It's yeah, apparent and then the other are... people are actually taking heed. You know, most people approach his show as a joke at first or entertainment. And some people just continue to only watch it as entertainment, especially when they start to disagree with him. Then all of a sudden they just start habitually just can't get away from it and hate watching, but they watch it as entertainment. And that's a trap, that's right? Funny. But some people watch it as entertainment at first and then wake up. And then some people hear something and then they like, they wake up and run with it. Like Joel, he fir- at first he heard it. He's like, what is this? It's crazy. But then something towards the end about anger... It caught his attention, and he looked more deeply and found that Jesse's telling the truth, and now he's taking it and running it with it himself and living it. So that's a nice thing to see, especially amongst the millennials and the Gen Zers. So that's cool. Oh, yeah, on Sunday, Sunday's church, when he was talking about work ethic, wow. Oh, yeah, the millennials. (laughs) Yeah, it was a really nice church service, guys. Check it out if you haven't. Bond Rebuilding the Man on YouTube. Yep. That's right. <laughs> so uh, the reason for my call is the wall. Two weeks ago on the front page of the Arizona Daily Star, we've got 
pictures of the wall going up. Yes. Looks beautiful. Yep. By hook or um, by crook, he's making it happen. And he's pulling in funds from all different places within the government. Because we spend, that's right. we being the, the government, spends our money like crazy on all sorts of vanity projects for these so-called scientists, self-important people. And the only thing we should be spending money on is the military and border security and um, maybe a little bit more to maybe just barely cover these people's cost of living. You shouldn't be paying these politicians, so-called civil servants, and bureaucrats and government employees so much through the nose. We pay them like union wages, and union wages is, tends to be kind of overpaid, to be honest. So it's a mess. But yeah, yeah. it's nice to see the wall going up. And the governor of California, California is uh, opening up more sanctuary areas or something. I he haven't said, heard, my I haven't heard but I know sure. that he basically declared California a sanctuary state. And they're fighting against Trump at every turn that they can. They're fighting against the people, too. I'm going to be talking about these vaccination things. There's people that are not happy about these forced vaccinations that they're pushing on kids. Vaccinations have yeah. proliferated. Anyways, I'll talk yeah, about that Yeah, when you later. take your kids to school, when you take your kids to school, yeah. they make you fill out this paperwork if you're not going to vaccinate your children. Yep. You feel pressured and like you have to do it. Yeah. At first, the school, when they called me, your kid needs vaccination for this, and it had to be, it was HPV or some vaccination. I'm like, no, she doesn't need that. Right. And, yeah, don't, um, even, don't they, even put them in public school anymore. It's a brainwashing yeah. camp anyways. Yeah. I, yeah. I know. <laughs> I see it. I see it yeah. now more than ever. So the uh, this past Sunday on the Arizona Daily Star, they're talking about um, the the wall again. Yes. But it's the it, it's like they prefaced the building of the wall and the company where the money was coming from with uh, two two Sundays ago, and then this Sunday, it's about Kita Bakita in Lukeville's where they're doing this wall and it's a spring and apparently there's two endangered species that live there and uh rolling my eyes so (laughs) (laughs) i think the wall is more important than worrying about little animals yep definitely (laughs) human beings are dying every day hundreds by the year correct because of no wall and that's uh those are the illegals dying who uh are crossing with the coyotes and the coyotes uh, abandon some of them because they are old or weak or slow, can't hang, they drown, they die in the desert, they, they um, die of thirst, they die of sunstrokes, stuff, stuff like that. And um, they mm-hmm. pretend like they care about the illegals, but the illegals are putting their lives at risk. And there's all kinds of corruption and madness with these cartels and all kinds of stuff going on. What a mess. That's right. And Lucille yeah. is actually the most dangerous place to be. If, you know, Organ Pipe um, National Monument, I think it's called, Organ Pipe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, there are places uh, where American that's citizens... Where, that's where Americans get killed the most, I think. I- I'm not 100% sure about that, but... Yeah. Yeah. We can't even Dangerous. set foot on our own national monuments and on our own land, American land, because the illegals are making it dangerous, and the cartels and all that. Crazy. I appreciate it, I, Chris. You're welcome. All right, take care. Keep it up. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. I'll get to some more callers in a moment, but I want to briefly touch on these anti-vaxxers versus the MSM, mainstream media, and the Democrats. So there are kooky people everywhere, right? There are kooky people in the conservatives and in the Democrats. Basically, all of them are kooky, but and most uh, conservatives are kooky, and all Democrats are kooky. But uh, anti-vaxxers are smeared as particularly kooky, right? Up in Sacramento, California yesterday, there were a bunch of uh, protesters who don't want these forced vaccinations on their children. Many mothers and others. Well, this guy Pan, a Democrat Asian guy named Pan, I think it's Richard Pan or something, a lawmaker from California. Well, state lawmaker, right? And this governor, Gavin Newsom, cousin to the singer Joanna Newsom, by the way, 
are evil Democrats and so is the media. The media are evil Democrats too. So this guy, this independent journalist, Mike Cernovich, who's been on uh, the Jesse Lee Peterson show multiple times, he was up there covering the event on Periscope and Twitter. He said six women were arrested in California capital, which is Sacramento, protesting SB 276. So SB 276 is basically a pro-vaccination thing. And NBC quote-unquote news tweeted, California governor signs bills to crack down on fraudulent vaccine exemptions. Interesting. And uh, I saw somebody on Twitter pointed out, where, the, where is the immigration fraud crackdown? Where is, which, you know, costs more lives than fraudulent vaccine exemptions. Where is the fraudulent, uh, all these fraudulent uh, crackdowns. They don't care about that. Legislators approved the changes as protests by hundreds of oppon- opponents boiled over with dissenters delaying the Senate debate by shouting and pounding on the walls and doors. The people are mad about this thing. And I can sympathize with it because they're promoting this, these vaccines. You know, look at the flu shot. That's a popular vaccine every year, right? I don't trust those flu shots. I don't get those. But a lot of people, government government employees, I believe they're forced to get these. And in some cases, they make people sick. Um, Some people have died from them. They've gotten all kinds of madness going on. And the vaccines used to be like one or two vaccines, right? Just to protect the people. But now they've proliferated. People get, kids today get like a bunch of vaccines. And I'm not so... I'm not so certain that all of them have been tested properly. And they I don't believe that these people are actually looking out for us. I think they just want to control the people. And I just don't trust it. You know, and look at who is pushing them. The craziest, the most, is the unscrutinizing liberal media. When I say unscrutinizing, they don't scrutinize fellow intellectuals. They only scrutinize non-intellectuals like Trump and real people like people concerned about all these vaccines. Maybe they don't, maybe all these vaccines aren't right. Some of them work, some of them may have issues with certain people, may create issues within certain people. And so I definitely sympathize with the protesters, the quote-unquote anti-vaxxers. It's kind of like the people that were mocked as birthers for questioning Obama's birth certificate. But if you look closely, the media didn't really look into it because they're supporting their black man, their liberal black. And the uh, only guys that looked into it of note were President Trump when he was Donald Trump, private citizen, and Sheriff Joe Arpaio looked into it. And they found some things that were definitely questionable. And it's, it's just sketchy. Because these things are, these vaccinations are playing with people's lives and health. And they're also forcing all of this, um, you know, public health, public public school. And it's basically socialism taking control of every aspect of your lives. And not just that, they're actually um, brainwashing people and in the public schools, right? And if they were so concerned about public health, why wouldn't they be into closing the borders or being more concerned about this globalism, this global trade that we have? Because a lot of diseases, West Nile virus, that's an African disease. And, uh, and people have getting, gotten sick a little bit from the West Nile virus. And they have other uh, mosquito-borne diseases. Where are they coming from? It's coming from, I think it's these like global trade stuff. All these ships coming in. People don't check them that well, maybe. And... And then we have all these unchecked, these refugees and illegal aliens sneaking in, unchecked, no wall. There's a lot of them sneaking in through the southern border, especially some through the northern border, but mostly it's from the southern border. And stowaways and all that madness. We don't check those. So I just, I I don't believe that these people actually care about the health of the people. They just care about their own egos and their own um, socialist agenda. They're evil. They're nasty. And they hate good people, like normal uh, family-type people. 
and normal, real guys like Trump. So, the media, the Democrats, if they're the ones pushing it, California Democrats pushing something, I'm automatically against it. I don't even have to research it. I don't have any babies yet, but I'm not going <laughs> to vaccinate them. At least not in, I'm only going to vaccinate the ones that, with the vaccinations that I trust, not the ones I don't trust. So, that's what's, that's what's happening in California. Gavin Newsom, not to be trusted. He's the one with the beta baby. Anyways, let me get to Rod out of Atlanta, Georgia. Rod, how are you? How you doing, hey? Doing fine, thank you. Okay, I got a question, hey. All right, go for it. Now, everybody wants the wall, right? The good people want a wall, yes. Okay, but what about the smart people that know that these people are building tunnels? Uh, we can deal with that, too. We can deal with that, too. But how? Because... You can't stop a funnel. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. How? Because... You never know. You never, you watched, never know where the hole's gonna come up at. You never... You didn't watch where the, the wall actually has to go down into the earth. Uh, yeah, several feet. I know. I know, yeah. but, but... But you know, they hired the best tunnel diggers from Chile, right? From Chile, huh? Interesting. Yeah, the best, the best tunnel diggers. Uh huh. <laughs> wow. And 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 they are they. I'm talking about the best. They are good. They have welders. They make. They. they All right, you got your money. point. And and what's your point? So why would we waste all these millions of dollars? Because a lot of people, I'll tell you tunnels. why, I'll tell you why. Because they're not all coming through the tunnels. They're coming th- over the easy way, which is where there's no wall. Why would you okay. waste your, why would you waste your time trying to go through a tunnel when you don't, when you need a wall, when you don't have a but wall? Listen. Listen. So yes, a wall would work. Walls work. How you doing? Uh, I gotta go, Rod. Sounds like you're... <laughs> Sounds like he's talking to somebody else. Anyways, let me get to Scott real quick. Uh, first time caller out of Houston, Texas. Go for it, Scott. Hey, what's up, brother? Not Long much. Long time listener. Right on. Hey, I got a question. Uh, what do you think about the Jewish influence in our our culture and kind of the stance you and Jesse uh, have against them? You know, there's... You guys have a pretty strong stance against the Muslims and black people, but whenever it seems somebody wants to come to the table with uh, a Jewish criticism, there's a lot of a lot of kickback. Just curious how that might be. I think that it's kind of in your imagination because we do criticize people who happen to be Jews. The media they tend to be Jews. The um, the liberals, most of them are Jews. The uh, ADL happen to be mostly Jews, a lot of the SPLC. So, but the Jews are different because they don't tend to tout, oh, I'm a Jewish person. Some of the times they do, and that's when we do criticize them. But most of the time you don't even realize it because they look white or whatever. And so that's, that's why, because they're not talking to, generally, exceptions to the rule, they don't be like, oh, as a Jewish person, blah, blah, blah. So when they do, that's when we get them. So you're wrong about that. Sure, that's that's fair, but yeah. you know, you know, when when black people act up, it's not like they're touting; they're doing it because they're black. They're just acting that way, and and Jesse calls them out to, you know, right their wrongs. And so I'd say the same thing for the Jews. You know, if they're if they're the heads of the opioid epidemic or hey, hey. pornography or yes. Yeah. So, do you love the Jews? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So Jesse speaks out in love about all those people, right? Including Jews, including blacks, including Muslims, everybody. That's all love that Jesse's touting. But a lot of you guys pretend to love everybody, right? But then in reality, you don't. You're not really seeing it clearly. And so, and so when, you bring up, when you bring up pornography, you're the only one who knows that. If you know that, then tout that. But we don't know who's behind pornography. We're not into that stuff. They don't, they're not outwardly promoting it. A lot of, a lot of people are outwardly promoting it. You see Pornhub uh, being retweeted by yeah. a bunch of people on Twitter when they say cute things, right? And I've seen that, and that's when we call it out. But you're not actually, you're not actually saying something that 
Jesse's not into and I'm not really that into. So you're you're pushing something that maybe you should be touting yourself on your own platform. Thank you, Scott. Take care, man. Let's see. Let me get to the fake news media and look how crazy they went over this hurricane forecast. Look at this hurricane forecast. Let's show the I think it's it's the one that's outside of the folders. So you remember Trump tweeted about this thing. Go ahead and put it up on the screen that that uh, Alabama was facing possible issues with the tropical storm force winds. So zoom in on that picture. You see that green area? That doesn't mean that they're necessarily safe. It means that they could face some issues. Tropical storm force winds. And if you scroll down a little bit on that, Nick, you will see 5 to 10 to 20 to th almost 30 percent chance of the winds hitting Alabama. So Trump, tw so Trump tweeted about that. And he's like, Alabama, heads up, be careful. And so the press went after Trump because one of the Alabama Birmingham offices said, we will absolutely not, we will be absolutely safe. We're not going to be affected at all by the storm. And they spoke in absolute terms, which the NOAA knocked that down. But it just shows you that these people don't tell, like, they're just into contradicting the president. And they're the ones making it political, not, not Trump. Well, I have some information about Reporters Without Borders who are pushing this uh, so-called misinformation, attack on misinformation, because they want to fight, basically they want to fight the right wing. Fight the people that are telling the truth about what's going on. Fight the people that are not pro-socialism, not pro-democracy, which is socialism. Democracy becomes basically tyranny. Um, AFP joins the BBC in an initiative to fight misinformation. And they talk about this whole bunch of these news outlets, international news outlets, right? Including the Wall Street Journal, too, which Wall Street Journal is a trash outlet pushed by rhinos. It's a rhino outlet. They are the ones, I believe, who attacked PewDiePie as promoting Nazi imagery. And they, they're the ones behind the, uh, basically, media attack on this, this um, biggest, one of the biggest YouTubers, PewDiePie, who is a non-political guy, just makes jokes for nine-year-olds. And it's kind of funny for some of the rest of us. Entertaining videos, nothing more. Very little, nothing political, really. Sometimes a little touches on it, but mainly not political. He doesn't really take a stance. You don't know where, his sta where he stands politically. Except that you know that he's not an SJW, because he wouldn't joke so freely. So they, the Wall Street Journal is one of those outlets, supposedly right-winging, right-leaning, right? But no, they're behind the, they're the mainstream media. They're anti-Trump, they're not pro-anything good. Reuters, CBC, BBC, BBC is Britain, CBC is Canada, Financial Times, another liberal outlet. AFP, Agence French Presse, whatever. Agency, French Press, whatever. And so all these outlets join in this so-called fact-checking network. International fact-checking network. If you know it's international, that just means globalist. Fact-checking network. Or G Journalism Trust Initiative, launched by Reporters Without Borders. And Reporters Without Borders, I do have some pictures of this stuff. Some of their stuff. Reporters without borders means globalists. They don't believe in borders, basically. Yeah, they, that means that they're not beholden to the country that they're from. That means basically they're not state-run, right? Supposedly, because Chinese uh, media is state-run. But it's, more, it's worse than that, because that's the opposite extreme. These people are for the socialist state. Socialist globalist state. They're liberals, and I'll, I'll show you examples of them being liberals. Reporters Without Borders came out last year for freedom of information, right? Reporters Without Borders for freedom of information. 
That's what they claim to be about. But they're not for freedom of information. Otherwise, they would be um, joining with Trump and the conservatives and independent creators in saying, hey, what about these people's freedom of speech? All these people that are getting censored on social media. Well, they came out against that. They're for censorship on social media. And they're for, they're not for Trump fighting back, pushing back against the female, black female so-called journalists who go after him. Because the black female journalists, so-called journalists, are a bunch of liberals and they believe in the fake racism thing. So I have a headline for you. The, the um, Reporters Without Borders condemns the uh, black, the Trump's treatment of black female journalists. So you know they're fake. RSF stands for Reporters Without Borders. I think that Reporters Without Borders must be a foreign outlet because otherwise why would their acronym be RSF, huh? Doesn't make sense. RSF must be French or something. Who knows? So, they condemned and <laughs> here's one, here's another headline when they went after the Trump for holding that social media summit. Trump excludes and targets social media and press at the unconventional summit. Unconventional. That means good. All right? So Trump is independent minded. And he and a lot of people have been complaining that Trump doesn't take the side of the people that um, are getting censored on, you know, his supporters who are getting censored on social media or shut down on, from their accounts. And Twitter, as you heard in my story about uh, Chrissy Legend, who was blocked by Trump on Twitter, because it's a public forum. Interesting, why would they call Twitter a public, Trump's Twitter account a public forum? I guess Twitter itself is part of the public forum. Maybe these uh, alt-right guys are right. And, uh, you know, Dylan's been arguing with me about it. That Twitter and the, these social media things are the public forum. It's not just talking on, uh, talking on Gab. <laughs> Some people are even banned on Gab. Uh, anyways. They're talking about, uh, here's, here's the statement from this Reporters Without Borders woman about the social media thing. It's a long quote. It's that one that's a long quote. There it is. The president, this is a quote from Sabine Dolan, RSF, which is Reporters Without Borders, North American Interim Executive Director. The president's strange social media summit is a distraction from the very serious issues of online misinformation and disinformation it amplifies the unsubstantiated rhetoric of anti-conservative bias from social media companies in the run-up to the 2020 elections. There's no question there's an anti-conservative bias amongst social media companies. Anyways, she goes on. This is both alarming and dangerous as a potential foreshadowing of the scale of political untruths might take during election season. So basically, she doesn't want Trump re-elected. She doesn't want people be, to be able to tell the truth and all that stuff. She wa and she doesn't, she doesn't mind the, the voices of the free press, which are really we the people, putting out our opinions and the truth. We the people talking. Independent journalists, not these, not these fake establishment mainstream media journalists and their, and their intellectual academic people that hate uh, Trump. And hate good people, hate whites, hate Christians, hate men. By the way, let me just show you this Sabine woman. And there's another woman who made another statement about the black female journalists, how Trump tweeted, treated the black female journalists. Let me just show you the, their pictures on LinkedIn. That's Sabine Dolan, a woman, white woman, from San Francisco Office of Journalism and Technology, Reporters Without Borders. That's her. Just a normal white woman, but... A liberal, anti-Trump, not surprising. And here's the other woman from uh, Reporters Without Borders, Margot Ewen, whatever, how you pronounce that. She was the former one who was criticizing, or maybe she's the new one, anyway, criticizing Trump's treatment of female journalists. Trump has basically pushed back on all the journalists because they're, uh, they ask biased questions. They push the fake na racism, sexism, Islamophobiaism, uh, anti-semitism narrative anyways I will get to some more of your calls appreciate it but I just wanted to point that out 
And these fact checkers too, by the way, are a bunch of dishonest liberal liberals, also known as intellectuals. I talked about in uh, the Hake News, PolitiFact butchers a fact check by lying about the Democrats' position on abortion, and they previously lied about the Democrats' position on open borders, because basically open borders is what we have already. Because look at it. All these illegals come in, pretend to claim asylum, so then we release them into America on, to await asylum hearings. Most of them never show up to their asylum hearings. So they're here. Op that's open borders. Uh, there's a slight filter. Maybe we send like a couple back. We send like less than 10% back, I think. It was the last numbers that I've seen. 10% of the illegals that come in here that are caught go back. Maybe less. And meanwhile, there's untold numbers that are not caught. I would, say, I would venture to say maybe half of the illegals that come in here are not detected. They're not caught. Some of them are detected, but they're not caught. Some of them are undetected. And then some of them are caught and released. So it's crazy. These people are for open borders. And this Ralph Northam guy, for pro-abortion, pro-baby killing. Let the baby be born and then decide whether to kill it. That's what Ralph Northam wanted. But uh, liberals like PolitiFact and Snopes and all these so-called fact checkers, that's why, it's, that's why there's a difference between facts and truth. Because you'll notice that they just go off of what the liberals say. They'll say, oh, I'm not for open borders. And then they say, oh, it's a fact. They're not for open borders. They just said that they're not. It's just like those, uh, the Jew haters. I never said I hate Jews. Of course you didn't say it. Nobody else, nobody admits most of the time that they hate anybody, but they do hate them. And they hate all people. They actually hate whites too. Nobody hates, nobody loves anybody if you have any hate. And they also defended that Kristen Cinema woman, who's also like, if I remember correctly, she's like a pro-abortion, pro, uh, I think she might be a lesbian. Let me just look that up so I don't keep on repeating that. Kristen Cinema. Wikipedia never lies, right? Let's see, lesbian. Nope. Homo. Oh, no. Can you Google it for me? Yeah. <laughs> Pull that up, Nick. Oh, she's bisexual. Okay. Thank you, Dylan. Oh, yeah. I look for it and I see two results. 13 matches, actually. Bisexual. Amazing. 13 matches on Wikipedia. That's nasty. On Just on her entry. So that means she's very bisexual. Very bad. And she was a Green Party activist, and she protested in a pink tutu against war. They claimed it was mostly false. PolitiFact did. So, these fact-checkers are intellectuals, and when you're intellectual, you're liberal. Because you're not into the truth, you're into facts. You're into uh, your own agenda and your own ego. And that's what liberalism is. Okay, so the trash media have been digging up dirt to promote their fake racism, sexism, homophobiaism, all that stuff. And um, I've heard, I've caught wind that um, conservatives, so-called, have been finally fighting back against, against them and doing the same thing back to them. Which is a good thing. Hold them to their own thing. Like when Jesse calls other people racist when he's out on the street. When he uh, says, oh, you're a racist. You can't, you can't say that to a black man. He's playing their own game against them. So this newspaper, The Hill, had an um, op-ed from Madison Gessioto talking about how the New York Times had this reporter, I guess trashed in the Jews or something, so-called anti-Semitic tweets, right? by one of its reporters. They put out this rambling article according to Madison Gessioto demonizing independent journalists for digging up the, these tweets. And their whole thing is, listen to them, they're claiming it's an attack on the exercise of the First Amendment. Meaning they're trying to shame these reporters into silence or being fired or whatever. Which is what the reporters have been doing. They tried to do it to PewDiePie. 
PewDiePie got fired by Disney. He had a deal with Disney and YouTube and all that stuff. He had this YouTube Red show. And they canceled all of that because of the hit piece from the, the liberal media, but Wall Street Journal, liberal media. Fake conservatives. Uh, hit piece trying to take down PewDiePie because he's an independent creator bigger than them. <laughs> ah, so it is a power struggle. All this racism, and it's not even a real issue. It's not even a real concern. But these people are fake. They fall for the fakeness, meaning the liberals, the intellectuals. And it's a power, it's a power struggle to, to destroy anybody who opposes them. And Trump opposes them. That's why they attack Trump. Because they're fake. They hate America. They're anti-American. So they're saying using journalistic techniques to target journalists and news organizations is fundamentally different from the well-established role of the news media, fake news media, um, in scrutinizing people in positions of power. So said the New York Times, the powerful New York Times. Because the New York Times is powerful in very subversive way. Like Satan is powerful. He doesn't have real power, but it's... Uh, intimidates people into firing the good people for saying something true or funny. Usually is what it happens. Because people say funny things on Twitter. Racist jokes are the funniest, right? Or, you know, anti-gay, whatever. All that stuff is either funny or honest or true or whatever. Kevin Hart, another guy that was going to be, um, he was going to say something that was, he said something that was like, if my son... Turns out gay, I'm not going to be happy. Something along those lines. And what did they do? They stopped him from being in the... Something. He presented some award, right? He was supposed to present some award. Cancelled. Because of a hit piece from the media. Hosting the Oscars, I guess it was. Or whatever. Doesn't even matter. I don't like that guy that much. I kind of respect his work ethic, I guess. Seems like a nice guy. But these are all you know, tools of the media. But they set their very high-profile examples of what happens to normal people all the time. Fired for having their own opinion or else for basically most of the time it's fired for having a position on the truth. Not being pro-gay and stuff. Pro-gay is anti-human. Because you're anti, you're actually hurting the person that you pretend that you're for. The gays are not happy being gays. They're miserable. So, the, um, the media does have power. So it's so fake. And that's why we are on BitChute, by the way. Jesse Lee Peterson is on BitChute. BitChute.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E <laughs> dot com. Slash also um, the Fallen State TV. The Fallen State is up on BitChute. And so is Bond Rebuilding the Man. BitChute.com slash Rebuilding the Man. And The Hake Report. The Hake Report.com. No, no. BitChute.com slash The Hake Report. Those are all on, on BitChute. And we're trying to get on the, um, some of these other platforms. We're trying to expand as much as we can to get on as many platforms to reach as many people. You know, uh, Jesse Lee Peterson was demonetized for quote-unquote hate speech, so-called, on YouTube. But we're still, we're not even trying to push it because we're just, and PewDiePie is on DLive now. He streams on DLive and then he puts up his edited videos on YouTube. We're on DLive. Jesse Lee Peterson is, I am. And DLive is another place where you can support people. Very, thank you guys for the Ninja Guinea's diamonds. Ninjet from one guy last week. That's cool. Ninjet is what, 10,000 or 100,000 Lino? Wow, that's nice. A Lino is like 1.2 cents or something like that. So, yeah, we're on those. And so, it's cool. And of course, um, the people that are talking about this censorship thing. They advocate for people to join on to mailing lists. So, um, the Hague Report does not have a mailing list yet. But, Bond does. That's Jesse Lee Peterson's nonprofit, Bond. A great mailing list. Physical mail and email. The social media companies can't necessarily crack down on your email. Unless you have a Google account, Gmail. But anyways, um... Yeah, go to rebuildingtheman.com slash subscribe for that. 
I definitely recommend it. But these people, these, uh, the New, the New York Times, they labeled their whole thing as news and not opinion. When they're trying to pretend that they're not just like the po lying politicians, wielding power, affecting people's lives, ruining people's lives. The fake news media promoted the fake story about Ferguson, hands up, don't shoot. Which, of course, predictably, and they should have known this, they probably did know this, would spark anger in the black community because the blacks are brainwashed to believe uh, the anti-white things that happen in the media, anti-cop things, fake pro-black things that happen in the media. And so, of course, they rioted. So I hold the media responsible partly for the riots in um, Ferguson because, not because they rioted, not because the media rioted, but because they know the blacks by now. They sparked riot after riot in the Obama administra administration because Obama gave a lot of play to the fake issue. Dylan, turn off your mic. <laughs> uh, I'm hearing him snorting and stuff. <laughs> Anyways, they gave a lot of play to the Black Lives Matter. Obama did. Obama brought... Al Sharpton to the White House multiple times. Oh, uh, Trump was right to bring uh, these independent creators and so-called right-wing activists to the White to the White House. You should have brought more, but um, the his staff doesn't really have the nerve to bring some people, so they canceled some of these invitations of guys like uh, that. There's this cartoonist creator guy who has come on Jesse's show, Ben Garrison. And he had this edgy cartoon and some labeled it anti-Semitic or something like that. And I don't, I don't know Ben Garrison to be like that. But they claimed that it was edgy and so he was disinvited from the White House. But they didn't disinvite the radical, evil, nasty Black Lives Matter. And because Black Lives Matter are leftists, socialists, Pro LGBTQIAR, and that means they're anti black family. And they're anti cop, which means they're anti black, because the blacks who are the down to earth ones who are stuck in the ghetto, stuck in the ghetto, they want the cops there. They're begging, there are mothers, according to Heather McDonald, who's an actual real journalist, not these fake news journalists. She might have a little bit of liberal to her, right? A little bit intellectual, but she's generally an honest person. She's saying that the the um, that the black mothers are begging the police to police their communities, and uh, so that's that. The fake news doesn't care about the so-called oppressed people. They don't care about we the people. They want to push uh, the vaccinations. Mm, let's look. Let's look at what actual real journalists say about them. So. Um, I got a tip about some real journalist that has an interesting opinion on him, and I'm going to look into that, and I'll tell you about it. I'll just briefly look at it, and I'll tell you what I find out. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow.